GHS 
Praise the Lord. Happy New Year to everybody. And happy new millennium. I pray the Lord will shower his blessings upon us. In multiplied full this year in Jesus name. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father we thank you for our gathering together once again. Thank you for the privilege you have given us. In this new year the beginning of a new millennium. That will serve you. And we pray oh Lord we will serve you with new strength. We will serve you the way you want will be your benefit to all your people in the whole church in jesus name as you bless us make us channels of blessings to other people thank you lord in jesus name we pray before we return to a normal systematic study i want to take some special studies in our tuesday meetings tonight i'm talking on the key to success in the new millennium as leaders in the church God has given us the work to do and what is the key to success in the new millennium we'll be looking at first Corinthians chapter 13 and I'll be taking a few weeks on this chapter first Corinthians chapter 13 reading from verse 1 though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and I'm not charity and become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to the bond and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Those are the three verses we're looking at today. You will see that the chapter itself mentions charity quite a number of times. That word charity actually means love. And it is love of the highest kind. That means true love, which is the medicine for our sick old world. If we are going to serve, and we're going to serve successfully, in the church as well as society we're going to manifest love practical love which is the medicine that heals our sick world actually in the greek language there are four greek words that uh, talks about love and you know when we use love in the english language we throw it around just anyhow i love my child i love my wife i love the church I love my new building, I love my shirt, I love my work, I love this, I love that. But in the Greek, it's not actually so. They have different words to show their love for different things. Number one is eros, E-R-O-S. And that is just the common, in common secular Greek, it means a secular, sensual love. And you'll be surprised, it's never used in the Bible. And that's where you get the word in English, erotic. That means something just sexual, uh, which uh, relates to the flesh. Number two is torge. S-T-O-R-G-E in the Greek. And it's the kind of love describing our relationship in the family. Parents to children, filial love, what binds us together, which is the family ties. And then the third Greek word, phileo. P h i l e o that just means a love in relationship to friendship you are friendly with somebody you love him that's actually uh, if you look at uh, john chapter 21 verses 15 to 17 when jesus asked peter lovest thou me he used a particular greek word which is number four agape and then peter replied yes i love you phileo and uh, jesus was saying you really love me deeply with the kind of love that flows from the heart of god oh he says i love you with a friendly kind of love jesus asked again you seen agape and peter replied again you seen phileo i love you i'm friendly with you you are my friend and then jesus the third time condescended and said peter do you love me phileo and he said, yes, you know, I love you, phileo. 
because his love was not at the highest level at that time number four the greek word is now agape that is divine love a love that flows from god who is love himself that's the kind of love flowing from the indwelling christ christ dwells in us as christians and in all we do in our relationship to our brothers and sisters to members of the church there is one thing that overrides overshines every other thing in our relationship and that is love actually such love is the principal key in christian leadership whatever we know whatever we have without that agape love we wouldn't be able to achieve much in the christian work let's quickly look at three points number one the centrality of love the centrality of love number two competence without love competence without love number three the consequence of a loveless life the consequence of a loveless life number one the centrality of love agape love as i told you is that love that has the power to move us to respond to someone else's needs without expectation of reward that means in our leadership this new year you want to love all the members of the church and you want to move with mercy and compassion not because they have the ability to reciprocate not because they have the desire to show that love back to you it's a kind of sacrificial love by the way you'll find that kind of love is central in the bible number one it is the priority commandment it is the priority commandment if you look at matthew chapter uh, 22 matthew chapter 22 reading from verse 36 matthew 22 verse 36 master which is the great commandment in the law jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart with all thy soul with all thy soul that thou and with all thy mind and in verse 39 the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself so then number one we know that love is central because it is a priority commandment number two it is the preeminent grace the preeminent grace as you look at the grace that the lord gives us and uh, you compare every other thing with, with love you find that it is preeminent in first corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 and now abided faith hope charity which is love these three but the greatest of these is charity which is love which means if you had uh, a choice of course we don't have any choice we need hope we need faith and we need love but if we had a choice we'll choose love because it is the preeminent grace is a priority commandment is a preeminent grace number three is the permanent virtue a permanent virtue first corinthians chapter 13 verse 8 charity never faileth but whether there be prophecies they shall fail whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away it says if you look at every other thing we have gift or grace you will find that this one we're talking about the agape love of god in our heart is a preeminent thing is a permanent thing the permanent virtue number one is the priority commandment you love god with all your heart all your soul all your mind and you love your neighbor as yourself number two is a preeminent grace is greater than every other thing number three is a permanent virtue when all the others have ceased it will still remain number four it is the proof the proof of belonging to christ the proof of belonging to christ in john chapter 13 john 13 verse 30 for a new commandment i give unto you that she love one another as i have loved you that's a new commandment really it says you will love one another 
and the measure of that love the limit of that love is as i have loved you and as you look at the love of jesus you'll find he loved the disciples every time whatever personal problems persecution he had from the pharisees or from anyone he loved his disciples to the very end did you notice that even when they came to arrest him that love still continued and even when they had betrayed him when he rose from the dead instead of he waiting for them to search for him in his agape love sacrificial love he was the one searching for them this new year the beginning of this new millennium that's the kind of love the lord wants us to manifest so that it is as he has loved us without our qualifying for it where we love workers in the church and love members and the church without waiting for them to qualify for our love as i have loved you so that ye love one another you check up on one another you visit one another and you have compassion to one another you show mercy to one another in fact he tells us in verse 35 by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have this agape love one to another it is then the proof of belonging to christ number five it is the prescription for a happy home the prescription for a happy home if you want uh, your home uh, to be new and renewed in this uh, new year uh, this is what you are going to look at in your family love is the prescription for a happy home ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church it says even as christ loved the church if you were to look back just for inventory on the family life every day of the week and throughout the past years that you have married you must have found out you couldn't or you didn't love your wife and you wives you didn't love your husband as christ has loved the church every moment of the years that pass but now he says let there be a new thing husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and he demonstrated that agape love for the church by giving himself for the church why don't you every evening think back did i give anything to my wife today did i give anything to my husband today and it doesn't have to be a big thing little drops of water make a great a mighty ocean just a thank you wasn't that a beautiful dish you gave me today wasn't that a good thing you did you cleaned up the house and we have a new house now for a new year for a new millennium wasn't that a good thing i'd forgotten we ought to buy those things for the children and you remember that just little 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 things and then you don't see anything negative in the home make it positive because of the sunshine of love that we find in the family and then number six it is the past for christians to walk in it is a path for christians to walk in in ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 be ye therefore followers of god as dear children not just as children dear children and you know why he uses the word dear here he is going to give us the example of christ and you know what the father said about the son this is my beloved son not just a son let your sonship have an adjective qualifying it not just that you are a son just a child of god as dear children if we're to be dear children what does that imply in verse 2 and walk in love again as christ also loved us that's the measure this year it's not they didn't love me why should i love them and the way they have did it, done it to me i'm going to repay them i greet them they didn't i greeted them they didn't answer why should i greet them again i try to manifest love and the character of the new man in the new millennium and they shunned me so i stop it i'm not going to be foolish you are going to be foolish for christ this new year in jesus name you greeted them they didn't answer run after them and greet them again because it's new life new year new millennium as christ 
has loved us and he has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Number seven is a perfect gift. The perfect gift. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he's been talking about uh, some various gifts of the spirit. And then in verse 31, he says, but covet earnestly the best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So then we understand uh, love is central. Number one is a priority commandment. Number two is a preeminent grace. Number three is a permanent virtue. Number four is a proof of belonging to Christ. Number five is a prescription for our happy homes. Number six is a path for Christians to walk in. Number seven is a perfect gift. I go to point number two, competence without love. Competence without love. Let's come back to First Corinthians chapter 13, reading from verse 1. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, that's a good gift, a great gift actually, and I have not charity, I am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. In verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Here you'll find, and now it's very good, in fact, in leadership. Uh, they tell us that in leadership uh, there, are, there are many things that are important in leadership but they tell us number one competence is very important in leadership uh, you must have the knowledge you must have the gift you must have the ability you must have the uh, capacity to actually lead the people and we cannot put uh, competence down when it comes to leadership they also tell us another thing that is very important is compassion compassion because you see the world is hurting and the people we're leading they're in the hurting world and therefore we also need compassion but then they also tell us that there is something whatever the competence and whatever the compassion if we do not have character people are not going to follow us and they, they would say the man has knowledge the man has ability but I can't follow him because it will even dent my own character and reputation. He doesn't have character. If you find anything going for leadership, for a leader, it is character. But you need those three things together. Competence, compassion, and character. But then, here we find the possibility of having competence without love. And just look at the construction here five times. In these three verses, it says, though I, look at it, verse 1, though I, do I speak of the tongues of men and of angels. That could be supernatural gift, you speak in tongues, diverse kinds of tongues, tongues of men and tongues of angels. Or it may be that you have studied and you, you know the languages very well. You speak three languages fluently, seven languages fluently, and you, you have mastered those languages. Even though you are master in those languages, that's competence. If you don't have charity, means nothing in leadership. And so, let's stop congratulating ourselves just because we know how to prepare a message. We know how to put across our thoughts, and we know how to get the attention of the people. That's not enough love must be central in everything that we do but i've shown you though i once in verse two second time now and though i though i what though i have the gift of prophecy and then i understand all mysteries and all knowledge and then the third time now though i though i have all faith so that i could remove mountains and then verse three it says though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and then the feed time though i give my body to be burnt now uh, from the construction of these sentences uh, you will find um, we spend much time in fact uh, we, we, we dig deep we go into the libraries we read the books we check up the concordance we check up everything what are we looking for uh, we're looking for the gifts of the spirit 
We're looking for the possibility of having prophecy. And we're looking for the possibility of understanding all mysteries so that we can answer any question, unravel any mystery. And we're also wanting to have all faith so that we can remove mountains. And then we might even want to have enough money, enough resources to be able to minister to the needs of poor people. And then it says, even though we have all that, even though we do all that, if we do not have uh, faith, if we do not have love, which is charity, it still means nothing. Look at it now. It uses in this construction and have not charity. Three times. In verse 1, in the middle there, and have not charity. In verse 2, in the middle there uh, or at the last part and have not charity and then in verse 3 at the end there and have not charity three times it tells us well, we may have all those things if we do not have this agape love it's gift without grace it's competence without christ-like character and it will not go far that's why it tells us what we are in the sight of God when there is no love that leads me to point number three the consequence of a loveless life the consequence of a loveless life uh, here he tells us from verse one uh, here Paul was talking and uh, you will know uh, that Paul himself he had quite a measure of all these things he spoke about do I speak or the tongues of men and of angels he said i speak in tongues more than all you corinthians but even though i have that gift if i have not charity i am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal that means i'll not be too much useful i can make noise i can make some sound but the sound will not make any meaning and you need to understand the background of the corinthians the corinthians they add uh, many temples and shrines of idol worship and in those shrines and uh, idol temples they used uh, symbols and brass and uh, immediately paul the apostle said that it will almost irritate the corinthians it, it will give them a nauseating feeling because they will remember their old lives in those shrines and idol temples it means that paul the apostle is saying we are not better than those gongs and symbols that they are using in those idol temples if we do not have love and actually was laying it upon the corinthians because the corinthians they were not behind in any of the gifts they were rejoicing in the gifts competing with one another in the gifts demonstrating the gifts and their services became unruly and riotous he said wait a minute i cannot see enough love there i see the gift i do not see the grace i see the competence i do not see the character and the compassion and you corinthians don't you know that if you have all the competence and the compassion the mercy and the love and the christ likeness is not there it's like we're back in the shrine in the idol temples it means nothing to god and then it goes on in verse 2 it says and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and if you knew the Corinthians that was the peak of their joy and that was the greatest testimony they will give and if you know many of us today too that's it that's it that's what we have beyond and above all the other people and we say you know my gift you know the wisdom I have you may have wisdom as great as that of solomon when solomon died and his son took over they came to the son they said rehoboam you know something or jeroboam you know something no rehoboam uh, we want you to show love to us your father he laid a heavy burden on us and that man had wisdom, wisdom enough to know how to oppress you without you being able to resist or reject. He just uh, captured us, kept us in the cage. Of course, he had wisdom, but the yoke was too heavy for us. You, his son, will you make the load lighter for us? We're willing to serve you. It shows you something. We may be wise. We may know the mysteries. We may have faith to remove mountains. Don't you remember those disciples of jesus james and john 
as they saw Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. I mean, their faith just came up to the highest level. And then they were now marching on. The faith is now there. We can do anything. We can dare anything. And then Jesus wanted to pass through one of the villages of the Samaritans. And the Samaritans, they knew he was going through to Jerusalem. They said, you are not going to pass through our village here to go to Jerusalem. We have no connection with Jerusalem. And you are not going to be, you are not going to make us a, a, a link or a connection with Jerusalem. James and John, just coming from the Mount of Transgression, the faith was there. They said, Lord, just allow us just the word and say go and will command fire to come on all of them and burn them up great gift but no grace and you know sometimes our leadership can be like that that's why jesus told them you do not know of what spirit you are i've not come to destroy men's lives but to save men's lives that means then having the greatest faith that's not enough for leadership it says if that's what we have if there is no charity i am nothing which means then in the sight of god such people that do not have the agape love the sacrificial love the love that goes with christ-like compassion and mercy makes us nothing in verse 3 and do i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be burnt now stop and wait a minute here we think that is actually a manifestation of love when uh, you know people do not have food you give them food they do not have clothing you give them clothing they do not ma have material things of this world you give to them you think you have shown the highest kind of love uh, but you know we can give those things without love a mother is uh, doing something and a child comes mommy mommy give me this give me this give me this don't trouble me you're too troublesome and the child comes back again mommy give me this give me this i told you i'm very busy oh, why are you doing like this you're very troublesome and then he goes he comes again mommy mommy you're not going to deny me this thing. give me this get and let me rest you foolish boy you're too troublesome you can kill a person just like this if I had a five children like you, I don't think I'll be alive for five months. You have given him what he wanted, but there's no love there. You can give food without love. You can give clothes without love. You can give help without love. You can even give counseling without love. You can give a lot of things that leaders give without love. The motive is what we are talking about. The compassion in the heart is what we are talking about. The attitude of giving it is what we are talking about. The thing that is flowing from your heart. While you are giving the material thing, you are also sending love thoughts on the thing. Oh Lord, let that thing benefit him. Let this satisfy his need. And you are praying for him and showing and manifesting love as you are giving that thing. And then it says, if I give my body to be burnt and yet have not love, we may become fanatically, religiously zealous. And we can even suffer persecution, but not with the right motive. We are saying, let them kill me and you are saying oh god you didn't say it out but under your breath oh god never forget this thing that they are doing this one they are doing to me i'm suffering for you but kill them after they have killed me punish them after they have done this to me and let this happen to them let this happen to them. although obviously openly you are giving your life for christ and you're suffering persecution but inside your heart you don't love those people you don't pray for those people you are not praying like christ forgive them they know not what they do you are not praying like uh, stephen oh lord do not count this against them do not lay it to their child we can do a lot of these good good things without love and when we do that the consequence of a loveless life is that number one it makes us nothing number two it also profits us nothing what the lord is telling us in this new year is that our leadership should add a new dimension and when you minister to your people when you counsel them when you pray for them when you give them whatever the lord is giving you a chance to give them show love manifest love and if you give everything and you do everything in love then 
the Lord himself will bless your service in Jesus name that's the key for success in the new millennium let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer it's not the ordinary love it's the love of Christ it's a gap love you will have compassion it means you are going to forget the past means you are going to have a new leadership style a new approach just to love and even when you don't have opportunity to preach just relating with people just interacting with people your love your interaction your compassion your mercy might even do more 